Verbals, Part 1, Participles, Gerunds, and Infinitives. Let's review. Before we get into verbals, let's back up a little bit. Our study began with phrases, and verbals are also included in phrases. But what is a phrase? A phrase is a group of related words that is used as a single part of speech and does not contain both a predicate and its subject. For future reference, if it did, having a predicate and a subject, it would be called a clause. We will study clauses at the end of the year. What were the first two phrases that we covered? The first was the appositive phrase. An appositive is a noun or pronoun that follows another noun or pronoun to identify or explain it. I like to call these renamers repeaters. They usually give information, usually like characteristics about the noun. The appositive phrase is made up of the appositive and its modifiers. For an example, please go to the right hand side of this page and click the Ruthie video. Let's take a look at Edna's Ruthie by Sandra Cisneros. Ruthie. Tall, skinny lady with red lipstick and blue babushka, one blue sock and one green because she forgot. Is the only grown up we know who likes to play. If I'm trying to find an appositive, I need the subject. There you go, Ruthie. Let's underline her. She is the subject of the sentence. When finding the appositive, Look for commas. Does this information rename, repeat characteristics about Ruthie? Yes, it does. To make sure I am correct, I need to find the main verb inside the sentence. Let's underline it twice. Is. That's right. Is is the main verb. Once I have found that, I can be pretty sure I have found the correct appositive. The second group of phrases that we covered were prepositional phrases. If you tend to have a hard time remembering prepositions, just look on page 119 in your English workshop for a list of many of the prepositions. A preposition is a word used to show the relationship of a noun or a pronoun to some other word in the sentence. Now we're mainly concerned with phrases. A prepositional phrase is a group of words consisting of a preposition, a noun or a pronoun that's going to serve as the object of the preposition, plus any modifiers that might come in between. For examples of prepositional phrases, please go to the right of this page and click on the video. Prepositional phrases are our next type of phrase. They begin with a preposition, end with a noun or a pronoun, and usually have between three to five words inside them. Let's find the first prepositional phrase, over the river. The second one, through the woods. Notice that a comma does separate it from our final prepositional phrase, to grandmother's house. The really cool thing is that if we remove the prepositional phrases from the sentence, what we have left are the elements that English teachers bug us to find anyway, like the subject, the verb, direct object. So let's try this. Let's take out over the river. All right, now through the woods. Let's get rid of to grandmother's house. What do we have left? We have a conjunction and. It's of no use, remove it. What do we have left? We go. We is the subject, go is the verb, and we have found everything we needed to find. The last set of phrases that we deal with will come from a special set, a group called verbals. They're formed from verbs, and I've underlined the word verb inside the word, so why can't we just call them verbs? Well, they look like verbs, but they don't act like verbs. There are three of these, and we will start with participles. They do take on another part of speech. A participle is a verb form that can be used as an adjective. It can take on two endings. If it's present participle, it'll end in ing. If it's a past participle, it will end in D or ED if it's not an irregular verb. Let's look at the two examples. The rising tide washed over the rocks below. Notice that I've underlined the word rising. That's my participle. It ends in ING, right? So that makes it a present participle. 
How do I know that it's the participle and not the verb? It's sitting in front of the word tied, which is a noun. Remember, participles act as adjectives. It's basically telling me which tied. And so that makes it a participle acting as an adjective. Washed is the main verb. That's what the tide did. So that's another way I can tell that rising is a participle. Look at the second example. The drenched dog ran for cover. Ends in ED. It looks like a past participle, right? Well, guess what? It is. What did the dog do? The dog ran. That's my main verb. Drenched dog, drenched, describes the dog. Therefore, it's the participle. It's acting as the adjective in the sentence. If you're trying to locate a participial phrase, you want the participle plus any complements or modifiers. Look at the example. The camper, listening intently, avoided the deadly snake. Yes, as you can probably tell, commas are your friend. They will help you locate many participial phrases. One thing you do need to be aware of, though, is do not confuse a participle with the main verb inside a verb phrase. For example, the sentence says, My mother has been cooking her entire life. Has been cooking is a verb phrase. Cooking is the main verb inside the phrase. I know it ends in ing, but it's not a participle because it is actually the action that the mother is doing. She has been cooking. So therefore, that is the main verb, and it cannot be a participle. As I said earlier, commas are your friend. Participial phrases can come in three separate locations inside a sentence. They can be at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. And the reason you need to know this is because when you write your paper for us, you will be required to include participial phrases in various places. So, let's take a quick moment to teach you how to find them. The first one will be at the beginning of the sentence. Look at the example. Sleeping through the morning, my sister missed her doctor's appointment. I usually like to start by find the participle first. Okay, I'm looking for an ing word or ed and it looks like a verb. I see sleeping and I see missed. Hmm, sleeping through the morning, my sister, okay, my sister, sister's the subject, what did she do? Oh, she missed. Okay, so I can eliminate missed. That just happens to be the verb of the, of the sentence. That takes me back to sleeping. Well, that's great. Sleeping through, how far do I go, where do I stop? Sleeping through the morning. Stop at the comma. If you locate the comma, you can usually locate the phrase. So sleeping through the morning happens to be the participial phrase. What if the phrase is found in the middle of the sentence? What you want to do is look for two commas this time. Look at the example. The Kimball Museum, known for having one of only four of Michelangelo's paintings, is celebrating its 40th birthday this year. Notice that the participial phrase is underlined and it begins with a comma and it ends with a comma. This is pretty typical for participial phrases in the middle of a sentence. Also, look at known. That is the participle. Yes, I know, it does not end in ing or ded because it's an irregular verb. Now, what if the participial phrase comes at the end of the sentence? Well, we're in luck. Guess what? It starts with a comma. Look at the example. We spent the day with our friends at school talking and texting each other. Talking is an ing word. We spent, okay, we is the subject, spent is the main verb, so I'm pretty sure that talking, texting, those have to be the participles. Again, I am correct. Notice that the phrase begins with a comma, and when you underline it, you will stop at the period at the back of the sentence. And that's all there is to it, to finding participial phrases and underlining them. 
okay, I know we're on a roll and we're doing really well, but what about when I don't see a comma? That's a really good question. Let's take a look. Look at the example. Mrs. Flowers read with the children gathered in a circle in the library. Now, what's the first thing we do? I like to go in and look for ing, d, e, d as endings. Okay, so read, no, it's not really going to work. Gathered, okay, that's an ed. I don't see anything ing wise. So gathered, uh, I'm not for sure. Well, let's find the subject and the verb and then we can figure it out from there. Mrs. Flowers read, oh, okay, so Mrs. Flowers, she's the subject. What did she do? She read to the children, right? So that takes away Mrs. Flowers and read. What do we have left? Yes, gathered must be the participle. The entire phrase, gathered in a circle in the library, is the participial phrase. Good job. Now it's your turn to try. Here are a couple of examples. Walking close to the ledge, we decided it was a good idea to hold hands. Where is the participial phrase? Now remember, start by asking yourself, where's the participle? I want an ing, d, or ed word. Looks like a verb, but acts as an adjective. And don't forget, commas are your friend. Second example. Every Saturday morning, I walk my dog to Starbucks for a slice of pumpkin loaf, singing to my iTunes. Again, where is the participial phrase? Remember all the tricks I taught you, and see me tomorrow, and you can ask me for the answers in class.